I always say I consider myself a backpacker, a wild camper first and foremost, and now a filmmaker second, and then a photographer third, because it's seeing these beautiful sights that most people don't see at dawn and dusk and out on the fell in all seasons and weathers that, that stirs my soul and sort of encourages me to keep going and keep going to capture these beautiful sights on camera and put them together in some kind of spectacular feature, documentary, a program. I'm getting too old for this. I suppose the Lake District and Cumbria, it means a great deal to me. It's, um, you know, I liken it to being my spiritual home, even though I wasn't born here. Just everything about the area, I absolutely adore. The people, the sense of community, and obviously the scenery. I'm having cardiac arrest at the minute. It's really beating now, the heart. <clears throat> well, I was hoping the weather would be a bit, a bit better than this. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's, it's beautiful, the scenery, looking at it all now, you know, to the naked eye, but on camera, it's, it's it's a bit dull, it's a bit flat. I'm sure it'll all look beautiful to a lot of people now and they could take a picture and it will look lovely. But it's it's not what I'm seeking though. For me, it's always about the drama, the light, you know. I'm, those special moments that a lot of people don't get to see. It's one of the reasons I wild camp a lot. It's one of the reasons I'm an early bird. I'm up out of bed at two, three in the morning and I'm off up to the fells. There's a term in photography and filmmaking they call the golden hour. So it's usually the the hour pre and post sunrise and the same for sunset because this, the angle of the sun in the sky and everything else, it brings a lot more color and contrast to the landscape. I can make you know, all the best plans in the world for some of the shots I want to get, but if I get about 80, 90% of what I aim to achieve, then I'm happy. Um, but anything less than 50, oh, I get really peed off. I can appreciate it's a lovely view of Hell Valley from here, but given the conditions, it's not, it just doesn't grab me in terms of filming it or even taking photos. It's not got that drama and light that I like to capture. You know, I suppose that's how I've, I've made my name really that way. So yeah. I wouldn't say I'm obsessed, but I'll definitely be coming back again and again until the conditions are right and I get, you know, get that wow shot. I suppose I'm a bit of a nutter in some respects, um, doing it all, especially in the winter. But then again, winter's my favourite time of year. Maybe I'm a bit of a masochist for myself, actually. All the, all the pain I have to go through, but... Yeah, it's worth it, though. I'd, I wouldn't change it for the world, not at all. I initially came up with the idea of the Life on Mountain series born out of frustration that what you see on the TV when they come to this area, they, yes, it looks beautiful, it looks nice, but they don't capture them at their very, very best. But you know, there's no greater pleasure for me than spending several nights out on the fell waiting to capture those special scenes. But it's also about the people, the history and heritage of the area. So I came up with the idea of doing a year in the life of England's highest peak, Schofield Pike. It was always the plan that I would choose Helvellyn as the last one in a documentary. It's The Scorfells is a favourite area of mine, always has been and always will be. But Helvellyn was one of the first big peaks I tackled as a teenager. And there is something about her, you know, she's majestic. Give this a go, this looks like could be interesting for a time lapse shot. 
I like the idea of this tree here and the lake and the fells behind. So we're not looking at Helvellyn, but it's, you know, the documentary is just as much about the wider area as it is the fell. I've always been a lover of the outdoors and the countryside. A lot of that's thanks to my grandfather. He had a profound impact on me in that respect of appreciating the countryside and landscapes. And um, Helvellyn was one of the first big fells I climbed. And I can remember a stormy day up there on a, I think it was an outward bound course. And um, we were trying to shelter from the, the wind and rain. And I found a nice little quiet spot. And, um, you know, I'm not one to wear my heart on my sleeve or anything like that. I wouldn't consider myself a big softy, but even at that age when I was 13, this spot, I remember looking over towards Windermere and the cloud break and the light coming out and shining down the lake. And um, I'm not ashamed to admit, I, I shed a couple of tears at the beauty that I was seeing before me. And as a 13 year old boy, I remember thinking, why do we have all these horrible troubles in the world? You know, bring people to places like this and it can change people's lives, and it certainly did for me. I'm self-reliant, it's all down to me, so that does add pressure on oneself to get the job done. So there will be days where I feel like it's work, where I have to go out and do stuff where my body's screaming for a rest. My heart and mind are saying, yeah, let's go, let's go. Excited like a kid, but my body's going, no, Terry, please, just give me two, three days off. Stay at home, sit in the pub all day or something, just relax. But I just, I get my thrills out here, just want to get back out. My heart really will be in my mouth at the premiere, despite my outward quiet confidence, because these things are subjective after all, but hopefully what I put together all that time, all that effort will be there on the screen and will resonate with people and hopefully inspire them. And um, if I'm honest, make them proud of me, you know, and particularly the locals. I just want them to be proud of what I've achieved and what I've tried to capture on camera. Jobs are good. There are times where I think, wait, well, it might be all right tomorrow. It could be okay tomorrow. Should I go or not? I need to rest. I really need to rest because I'm struggling. I'm hobbling around my home like an old man. And it just bugs me and eats away at me in here. And I think, damn it, I'm going to have to go. I'll tell you what, bloody hell, I could murder a cup of tea now. So I'm going to get up to the top as quick as I can and get my camera set up and hope for the best. Well, yeah, I'm conscious that the, uh, the clock is ticking now. The sun will be up soon and I want to be prepared with my cameras. Ah, oh, shit. <coughs> come on, camera, come on, come on, switch on. All right, here we go. All right, that's that shot. I'll let that record a minute. Well, it's a bit disappointing now I'm here. There is a gap on the eastern horizon, but it's not a big enough one because the cloud above's blocked the sun now, but even though it's not exactly panned out the way I hoped, because these things happen, it's always a gamble. Um, I'm not complaining. <laughs> People are still in bed at the minute. It's nice and quiet, but I've got all this to myself and um, it's just good to be out, really. It's good for the soul. There'll be shots that I spent months working on trying to capture and I may not even use it in the edit. But again, it just comes with the territory. I'm here to tell a story. I'm sharing my love of the area with a wider audience and 
sometimes that means I have to cut shots or scenes. That involved a lot of work, but that's just the way it is. It's a creative thing. It's a waiting game. You need the patience. Um, I might not have got the shots that I hoped for this morning, but there's still other stuff going on right, like right now. I'm looking right over. There's some lovely bloody rays shining down on all water. And onto the shores there. Do you know what? <laughs> Forgive me, I'm gonna have to leg it back and get my video camera and get some shots of that and off that looks really tidy. Oh. This landscape here, you know, it, it does affect you on a profound level. I feel like I've been here all my life, to be honest. I really do, and um, it's just there in me. My wife jokes she can't get me out of the county now. I've not really thought about what I'm going to do, how I'm going to feel when I finish Elvelin, because that will be the, the final chapter in my Life of Mountain trilogy. In a peculiar way, I don't want to. I feel like I'm going to be saying goodbye to something that's... <laughs> yeah, it's made me well up a bit, actually, thinking about it. You know how it's been so big a part of my life? OK, not my whole life, but, you know, the last six, eight years, it's, it's just there. It's, I've been living and breathing it. And, um, well, reluctantly admit, I suppose it would be my legacy to the area and what I'll probably always be known for. So what I'll do after that, goodness knows. I'm uh, definitely an off-comer, but this is home. This is where uh, I'll see out the last years of my life.